Down in here. Come on down in here. You got a little room in here. <clears throat> and some of you can get in right in this little area right here. This looks like a party. You can get in this little area. Come on down in here. Okay, folks, there's one thing I want you to look at. One, two, three, four, shoot doors. Behind them shoot doors happens to be a great big hole called a pocket. Now that pocket goes, that hole goes from this level to the next two levels up. That's how they transferred rock from the other two levels to this level to take it out of the mine. Now that hole probably holds anywhere from 800 to 900 tons of broken rock. Now then, back in 1915, they hired stout young men, and they brought them down here. When he got down here, they gave him a car like this. That's called an A-car. It holds three quarters of a ton of rock. That young man would come down here, get up on a little loading platform, take a piece of two-inch pipe, put it out here, pull that handle down, that door went up, the rock went in the box, and as it started filling up, he just pushed it up and being concave, it would just follow that rock down and pinch it off, sometimes. Now then, once that young man got this car filled up with the job title of Trammer, he got behind it and he pushed this car to the front of the mine, dumped it, and came back all day in semen. Did they have fires underground? Sure they did. Remember, they had candles. Miner get careless, kick his candle over, or maybe he's taking a nap and it burned down into some sawdust, well, they get a fire going, they just come in and shut them fire doors and bring in a fire door, a fire crew. By the way, if you're standing up there around our displays and you looked in here and you saw that fire helmet, it didn't work. It was supposed to be modern, it still leaked. Now then, <clears throat> this system right here is called a single setup. Two men have put this post where they want it, put this bar where they need it, take this machine up, and set it up here into a saddle. Now this machine weighs 280 pounds. Runs with air, runs with water. The good thing about it is you could drill a hole there, a hole there, and a hole there. Loosen those nuts up, swing it around, drill three more holes. The bad thing about this machine is, folks, it used a steel bit. It's a Timken bit. Timken bits are made in Los Angeles and Denver, Colorado, and it unscrews. But folks, if I was going to drill 25 to 28 holes into this limestone wall, I'd better bring about 45 bits because this rock is hard rock and it will hammer that bit down like a mushroom. Now then, this machine here came underground before me. It left before me. I'm so glad I never got to run it. There's no water going through this machine. This is an air jet. And if you start drilling into this limestone wall, in about 10 to 15 minutes, this room will fill with a white dust powder. One of us will have a sinus problem or an infected lung. The miners had a name for this old machine. They called it the Widowmaker. You run it very long, you're gone. 65 pounds. You got to move it, you put your arm underneath it, grab that handle and carry it off wherever you want it to go. Now it runs with air, it runs with water. And it's quite loud. I still say, huh, a lot, especially around the house. <laughs> but sometimes I have to. <laughs> it uses a different type of a steel and a different type bit. It uses a tungsten carbide bit. It doesn't dull. Folks, and as fast as this machine is, I can start this machine up, and I run this in about two weeks ago. Take this machine and this piece of steel, and I can drive it into that wall in five to seven minutes all the way in. The leg does the push. You don't have to fight it. Just stand here like this and drill a seven foot hole. Now this machine has a little disadvantage. Yeah, it runs with air, it runs with water, has this leg to do the push. That's a bad thing. Let's say I'm drilling somewhere and a new man comes walking by and he'll say, hey, I need to learn how to drill. I want to be a miner. Show me how to, where to put the holes to blast. And you know what we'd tell him? Have at it. Well, he'd jump on this machine and throw that throttle forward. As soon as he stepped his leg over that leg, you grabbed the hold of him and threw him away from it. 
Folks, there's 150 pounds air pressure in this lake. If it slips, instantaneously it's this high before it falls. This handle right there will make a man sing soprano in the church choir. You're probably calling Squeaky for a week afterwards. <laughs> Come on and go with me with a little class. Are you taking pictures? Now then, folks, you look at these walls. It's got these fuses sticking out of it. Now, this is called a face. Everything in front of a miner is a face. The back is the back, the bottom is the floor, but the sides are called the ribs. Now then, if we was to blast this and everything went right, I could put that square set of timber, twist it, and go back in. Now that's the back holes, the breast holes, two relievers, the skimmers, and the lifters. This right here, folks, these five holes is not a funny face. It's called a five-hole berm. And it's built and drilled this way for one reason, especially in this hard rock. When this hole goes off, it's going to break to those four dummy holes. And with nothing else going off, then it's going to blow that rock about 20 feet that away. Now, the idea of breaking this hard rock is you got to create a cavity right here. Then one hole at a time, you start enlarging that cavity. Because folks, if you shot them all at one time, you wouldn't get a foot of that rock. It'll blow right back out of that limestone holes, just like a shotgun. Now that in the earlier days, all of our caps had, uh, all our fuses had the caps on them. And I'd take one stick of dynamite with a cap and a fuse, and gently put it in the hole with one of these sticks. Then... I would, on this one, I'd take maybe 12 more sticks of dynamite, rip them with a pocket knife, put them in there, and mash them. I'd have anywhere from 12 to 13 sticks of dynamite in that hole. And I'd probably put eight in that one, eight in that one. Eventually, we quit using so much dynamite. Dynamite's gassy, very gassy. And we went to another type of an explosive. I would put one stick of dynamite with a cap and a fuse in that hole. And then from a paper sack with a big air gun, I'd fill that hole up with a compound called carbamite. Carbamite's a mixture of coal dust, diesel fuel, and ammonia nitrate. The same thing that blew up Texas, the FBI building, stuff we want to put around our roses. Commercial fertilizer. It will explode. Now then, let's say we've got it all loaded up. And it's a half hour before quitting time. I'm going to go to the base and I'm going to have a little board like this. It's called a spitter board. And I'm going to walk up and I'm going to take this first fuse that I want to go off. I'm going to cut off about 18 inches of it and put it on that board. Then, that piece that I cut off, I'm going to use it for a measure. I'm going to cut that one about a half inch longer. Throw that first one away and keep that second one. Measure this one out. It's going to be a half inch longer than the last. Every fuse that I start cutting through, all the way through, is going to be approximately a half inch longer than the last. That's how I time this round, to start my cavity and keep enlarging it. When this round goes off, I want to hear it go. Boom, 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 boom. If I got one boom, I messed up. Now then, let's say it's 15 minutes before quitting time. Well, my partner and I both have a little rod like this, it's called a spitter rod. Burns at 1200 degrees. Why do we have this? Well, let's say we're working somewhere. We have a lot of moisture in the air. These old dynamite fuses were black powder. And you've been whittling on them and they'll get a little bit wetty on the end. You can stand here with an old Zippo cigarette lighter and never get them all lit. This is hot enough to go through that little damp puddle. You light them together and you will start out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you light 25 to 28 holes. Once you get them lit, you and your partner is going to take this and you're going to throw it down right there. This thing only burns for 40 seconds. Are we starting to tell you something? Definitely. Folks, these are because you didn't want to take a chance of stumbling and falling in, in front of your blast. I could take you to the train, go around the corner. Good count. As if they all went off, fine. If I thought I had a missed hole, I'd tell my shift boss when I got on top, please tell the opposite shift, you want these people to leave? You want them to leave? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you your privacy, though, okay? I'm a good guy. We're As I walk away now, down I'm going to agree to the track. It's just a rail car. I kicked that wedge out from under that wheel. <laughs> 
Now you want to hit somebody, don't you? <laughs> the car will start rolling on somebody while they're and on it back in the day. As the car goes rolling up, and your hat, your belt, and your lights back here, you don't have that light. It is so dark you can put your hand on your nose and you can't see it. You'll start screaming, squalling, bawling, throwing a fit. And somebody in the dark is going to say, set that brake. Now, what was that brake? Grab that. That's it. You got a good hold of it? Good. Now, I want you to know something. These cars have no brakes. That's a valve that dumps it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you are mad, aren't you? <laughs> now, then, I'm not through with you. After this car co uh, stops rolling and you get out of your hostilities, I'll give you your hat, your belt, and your lamp back. Then I'm going to give you a shovel, a five-gallon bucket, a sack of white lime, and a water hose. You've been initiated. Why wouldn't we initiate you? Folks, I had to clean it up. Every person that went underground got initiated, whether you liked it or not. Okay, here we go. We're getting ready to see the outside world. Wherever you want to go, wherever you want to go.